Hello everyone, this is Dr. Bread. As I said in my latest community post, I will start posting Naruto content in text-to-speech format. I will try my best to finish off some of the My Hero Academia stories I've started but will start to pump out Naruto stories from now on. Answer. Begins the first part of my new series. What if Naruto had his own Zanpakuto? I hope you enjoy. Please like the video and subscribe if you enjoy the video. Now without further ado, let's get started. Naruto let out a sigh of relief as he arrived at a clearing and sat down. That was way too easy, he thought. He had just come from stealing the scroll of sealing from the Hokage Tower, after one of his academy instructors, Mizuki had told him there was another way of passing the graduation exam that he had failed for the third time. The test was simple, steal the scroll of sealing from the Hokage office, and bingo, you passed. Naruto grinned excitedly as he opened the scroll on scan through the contents of it, he would finally become a ninja. As he laid eyes on the first technique, he groaned in frustration. Ugh. Shadow clone jutsu. Seriously. Clones are my worst technique, he whined, although he scribbled down the instructions on a blank scroll, he had taken with him so that he could learn it later, he wanted to find something cooler. After a few minutes of aimless reading, his eyes fell upon a seal that stood out to him. There was nothing that was outwardly interesting about the seal, however, Naruto felt as if the seal was calling out to be released. He followed through with his instincts and pumped some chakra into the seal, and there was a small puff of smoke, after which the smoke disappeared, leaving an old brown book. Naruto raised an eyebrow. An old book. He wondered out loud. Curiosity getting the better of him, he picked up the book and read the front cover. The way of a Shinigami, he read out loud. Normally, Naruto wouldn't even bother himself with books since he found them boring. But this book felt different. Not seeing any reason to just check it out, Naruto opened to the first page. The first chapter read, Understanding Your Soul. Naruto, knowing that he had a good few hours before Mizuki showed up, started to read. He then learned of a place that existed centuries ago, called Soul Society, and the people that inhabited the place, people that went by the title of Shinigami. The Shinigami of the Soul Society were exceptionally strong swordsmen and swordswomen, wielding special blades called Zanpakuto that each had special abilities. Along with their weapons they were proficient in using spells called Kido. Unfortunately, the Soul Society was overcome and destroyed by hollows that were aided by a man called Sosuke Aizen, who had already previously betrayed the Soul Society in pursuit of power. It seemed he had turned out victorious, when the Soul King himself came and erased Aizen and his hollows from existence. Knowing that the time of the Shinigami was over, the Soul King wrote everything he that was to know of the Soul Society, including who they were and how they fought, after which he had given the book to his good friend the Sage of Six Paths for safekeeping, and once he had, he himself departed for the realm of the gods and took up the title of Death God. Answer. The book was given to the Uzumaki clan to be kept safe, but nobody could understand or grasp the ways of the Shinigami, so the book remained untouched throughout the generations until finally being sealed into the scroll of sealing. Naruto read how Shinigami used their Zanpakuto, which was done by looking deep within your soul and meeting your Zanpakuto spirit. Naruto really did find books boring, but this book blew him completely out of the water, from discovering a group of people that were arguably stronger than all the shinobi villages combined, to finding out that he had a clan, and felt betrayed that the third Hokage, who he frequently called Gigi, kept that information from him. Naruto was about to try out some of the new things he discovered, when Aruka appeared. Naruto, do you have any idea what you've done? Yelled Aruka. He had been told by his childhood friend Mizuki of Naruto stealing the scroll of sealing and was shocked beyond belief. He was convinced that Naruto would never do something like that and decided that he would question the blonde himself. Oh. Hey Aruka sensei, I stole the scroll, so did I pass? Asked Naruto, shocking Aruka. Naruto, what are you talking about? Aruka asked in complete confusion. Whoever steals this scroll passes, Naruto answered with a wide smile. What on earth gave you that idea? Asked Aruka. Mizuki sensei told me about it. He told me about the scroll in this place, Naruto responded. Mizuki, but why? Thought Aruka. But just as the thought crossed his mind, he heard the whistling sound of kunai being thrown in the direction. Look out. Aruka yelled and pushed Naruto out of the way, taking the brunt of the attack. Damn, I missed. Oh well, can't get everything first try, right guys? Asked Mizuki who had just arrived on a branch and had a sadistic smirk on his face. 
What is the meaning of this? Mizuki, yelled Aruka. Naruto was looking between the two chunin in confusion and worry. Why had Mizuki sensei attacked him and Aruka sensei? Naruto asked inwardly. Naruto, well done on bringing the scroll here, now, hand it to me, said Mizuki with an evil smirk. Don't listen to him Naruto. That scroll holds the village's most powerful jutsu, Mizuki tricked you into getting it for him, said Aruka in pain as he held his bleeding shoulder. What? Naruto said in confusion and shock as he slowly turned his head towards Mizuki. HMPH, Aruka is just trying to keep you from getting stronger, instigated Mizuki. Naruto looked back at Aruka with wide eyes again. He's lying Naruto, take the scroll and run. Yelled Aruka. Mizuki decided to make sure that didn't happen and smirked. Say, Naruto, ever wonder why the village hates you? Asked Mizuki with a smug look. Aruka, realizing what Mizuki was about to say, widened his eyes. Mizuki that's enough, yelled Aruka. Mizuki's question intrigued Naruto a lot. For most of his life he had been hated and glared at by most of the village but for the life of him, couldn't figure out why. Why? What are you talking about? Asked Naruto. Mizuki continued while smirking. Have you ever heard of the QB? He asked. Stop it Mizuki, it's forbidden. Yelled Aruka in desperation. Everyone was told that the Yondime Hokage killed it, but that was a lie, he couldn't kill the beast, so he sealed inside a newborn baby, and that baby was you. You are the QB. Mizuki yelled the last part. Naruto's world was shattering. He was the QB, all the glares, the whispers, the hate, the scorn, was because he had the fox sealed in his gut. Naruto started to pant heavily as the thoughts in his mind and Mizuki's words sunk in. Aruka looked over at Naruto with worry. Mizuki laughed maniacally at the blonde's shocked face and shock and took of one of the few Mashuriken and started spinning it rapidly. Now it's time that you finally die, demon. Mizuki yelled while throwing the shuriken at Naruto. Aruka watched in horror as the shuriken was heading towards Naruto and knew he couldn't make it in time to stop the shuriken. Naruto. Aruka yelled in panic. The world seemed to slow down for Naruto, who was still in his own shock from hearing the reason he was hated. I'm the QB, I'm the QB, I'm the QB, he repeated in his head. No, you are not, a voice of a man said seemingly out of nowhere. This kicked Naruto out of his thoughts and caused him to look around frantically. Huh, who said that? He asked. Oh, so you can finally hear me eh? The voice mused. Who are you and what are you doing in my head? Naruto asked still surprised he was talking to someone in his mind. That will depend on the answer you give my question. If you had power, what would do with it? The voice asked. Naruto was quiet for a second, until he responded. I... I would use that power to get strong enough to protect my friends and precious people. But what does it matter, I'm the QB, he answered with a frown. Naruto do not listen to that fool, you are merely its container, not the beast itself, when water is poured into a glass the water does not become the glass, neither does the glass become the water, they remain separate. As is with you and the QB, you are the glass while QB is the water, you are not one in the same, you are different, the voice said comfortingly. Naruto after a few seconds calmed down after understanding what the mysterious voice had explained to him. But just as he calmed down, he saw the few Mashuriken heading towards him in slow motion and as he remembered the current situation, he began to panic again. Oh crap, Mizuki team is still here and after the scroll and that Shuriken is sure to cut my head off clean, I can't dodge in time. Naruto panicked. Fear not Naruto Uzumaki. I have thought over your answer to my question and I am pleased to say that you are worthy to hear my name and wield me, the voice said. Huh, what do you mean, who are you? Naruto asked. I am your Zanpakuto spirit, the voice replied. Naruto's eyes widened in realization. You mean you're my sword? Naruto asked, shocked. Yes, now do you wish to stop this foe before you, do you wish to wield me and protect those who you hold dear, the voice asked in a commanding tone. Naruto's face hardened with determination. Yes. He responded with conviction. Then rush forward with the force of mighty winds, pull me out and speak my name, the voice said. As the world went back into normal speed, with the few Mashuriken almost reaching the blonde, Naruto yelled out. Fukitobase, Kazamaru. Blow them away, Kazamaru. And as Naruto said those words, wind started to rapidly surround him with a green aura that knocked the few Mashuriken off course. 
The wind became a violent tornado as big as the Hokage Monument and was about to blow the two Chunin away, but it slowly died down. After getting his bearings, Mizuki looks around for the demon brat until his eye fell on him. Aruka's eyes also saw the blonde and was shocked. Standing in the tornado's clearing, stood Naruto who was holding two oddly shaped daggers that had no guards. The blades were black and had a silver white edge. At the end of each of the blades was a small green ribbon. Naruto opened his eyes and glared at Mizuki with cold blue eyes and an emotionless face. Mizuki, for betraying the leaf village and for attempting to steal the scroll of sealing, I'll kill you, said Naruto in a threatening tone. After a few seconds Mizuki got out of his shock and processed Naruto's words and smirked. A pathetic demon like you. A dead last. Defeat me. A chunin. You couldn't even make genin and you're threatening me with death. He shouted out with laughter. Are those your final words? Naruto asked mockingly but still held his emotionless face. TCH, since you want to die so gruesomely, let's see what you got, demon fox. He yelled in response. That was his last and final mistake. Naruto slowly took a stance and raised one of his blades over his head and yelled. Repuzen. Gale slash. As he said that, he swung down his blade and slashed it down towards Mizuki, releasing a green blade of wind at Mizuki. Mizuki who was too shocked to dodge, watched as the blade cut right through his torso and exploded in a burst of wind power and multiple more tiny wind blades cut through Mizuki's already dead body. Aruka watched in shock and surprise as Naruto used his attack to cut Mizuki's body in half. Naruto, after seeing his target dead calmed down and joined his blades together and they merged in a bright green light and the two blades became one katana with a white sheath that had green swell patterns along the sheath and the hilt was green and had a green ribbon at the end of the blade. This was its sealed form. Naruto then walked up to Aruka. Are you alright, Aruka-sensei? Asked Naruto. Aruka after a moment got out of his stupor and smiled at Naruto. I'll be fine Naruto, thanks, replied Aruka as he sat up. Hey Naruto, come here and close your eyes, Aruka called. Naruto complied and got closer to Aruka with his eyes closed. He felt his goggles being removed and, in its place, the soft cloth wrapping around his forehead and a metal plate on it. You can open your eyes now, said Aruka. As Naruto opened his eyes and saw Aruka holding his goggles with a smile. Congratulations, you graduate, said Aruka. Naruto's eyes widened and smiled softly, and he chuckled. Thanks, Aruka-sensei, replied Naruto. After that Anbu had arrived and collected the forbidden scroll and Mizuki's dead body, being shocked on how the latter was killed. Later that evening Naruto was brought to the Hokage office. The Sandime Hokage, Hiruz and Sarutobi took a puff out of his pipe and looked at the newly promoted blonde Genin. I see, so you were merely tricked into stealing the scroll, said Hiruz and after hearing Aruka's report. Naruto nodded in agreement. Very well, Aruka, you are dismissed, I need to have a chat with Naruto, Kun, ordered Hiruz and. Aruka nodded and left in a shun shin. Now then, Naruto, Kun, care to explain where you got that weapon to defeat Mizuki, asked Hiruz and. Naruto's face hardened and his eyes focused on the old man. GG, before I explain, I have some stuff to ask you, said Naruto in a serious tone, which unnerved the old Hokage, since it was unnatural for the boy. Why didn't you tell me about the QB, and why didn't you tell me I had a clan, Naruto asked sternly. Hiruzen was expecting him to ask about the QB equals, since Mizuki opened his trap and told the boy of his burden, but the second question took him for a loop. Naruto, Listen, I kept the QB and your family a secret to protect you, Hiruzen began to explain but was cut off. Protect me, GG. My entire life I've wondered why people hate me and why people treat me poorly and I've asked you why time and time again, but you always said you didn't know, and while you refused to tell me the reason for the villagers hate for me, I had to deal with heavy glares and beatings from mobs, and you say that it was to protect me. Naruto said, raising his voice in anger. Hiruzen bowed his head in shame. He had no idea the villagers took their hate for Naruto this far. I'm sorry those things happened to you Naruto and there should have been no reason for me to keep you from knowing about your burden, but keeping you unaware of your clan and parents was a must, since your parents were very powerful and famous shinobi and had made lots of enemies who wouldn't think twice before killing you for revenge, explained Hiruzen apologetically. After a few minutes, Naruto calmed himself down after hearing the old man explain. Listen Gigi, I understand why you did what you did but it's going to be a long while until I trust you again, said Naruto seriously. 
Here Uzun was saddened at that but couldn't blame him. He nodded in acknowledgement. Who were they? My parents. Naruto asked. I cannot tell you about your father at this time, but I can tell you about your mother. Here Uzun said and took out a photo and a scroll and handed them to him. Naruto stared at the photo long and hard, taking in his mother's blood red hair and violet eyes and fair skin. Her name was Kushina Uzumaki, and she came from the now destroyed village of Azushiogaku. She was known as Kanoa's Red Death. Naruto nodded and opened the scroll. It was a letter from his mother in her last moments. Hello Naruto, my son, this is your mother writing. I don't have much time to write much, since the QB is on a rampage. I just want to say that I'm so, so sorry that I'll never be there to raise you and take care of you and love you like a real mother, please forgive me, my son. Just make sure to take care of yourself and make sure to eat healthily, and be sure to make lots of friends, not too many friends but people you care about and can trust and don't be a spoiled brat. When you venture into love, be sure to find someone like me. Your father always disliked loud pink-haired women, but on the other hand he really respected and admired those pale-eyed Hugas, as they are kind, gentle and respectful, so I'd say you'd have a better chance with one of those ladies than those banshees. My time is nearing, and I can't write any more, I just have one last thing to say to you, know that I love you and always will. Your mother, Kushina Uzumaki. Naruto's tears dropped onto the page of the scroll as he finished reading the letter. She loved you more than anything, so much that she gave her life to protect you, Hiruzen said. Naruto wiped his tears. Afterwards he told the old Hokage about how the blade was a memento from the Uzumaki clan that he found in the scroll but kept the old book a secret. Hiruzen agreed to let him keep the blade. Can I be dismissed? I must prepare for team placements tomorrow, Naruto asked. Actually, because of this evening's incident, I'm pushing team placements back a month, so take this time to train and get familiar with your new blade, said Hiruzen to which Naruto nodded and left. One month later, throughout the whole month before team placements, Naruto trained like his life depended upon it. He had mainly trained with his Zanpakuto using the Shadow Clone Jutsu. The usefulness of the Shadow Clone Jutsu allowed him to do years worth of training in a single month. He became familiar with his Zanpakuto spirit, known as Kazumaru, training under him to master his Shikai, and was close to achieving Bankai along with helping Naruto master his new wind abilities that he drew from the infinite pools of his soul. Kazumaru also taught Naruto a Taijutsu style called, the Hurricane Fist, a style that utilized his wind-based abilities to form a style that incorporated powerful strikes and fluid, flexible motions that resembled that unpredictable and powerful force of a hurricane. He also learned Kido and had mastered a good couple of spells in each category that were, Hado, Way of Destruction, Bakudo, Way of Binding and Kaido, Way of Healing. Naruto also learned how to use Shunpo, Flash Step, a move that worked just like the Shunshin that was commonly used by Junin and Chunin, but on a much larger scale by channeling his Ryatsu to his feet, he can cover large distances in a flash. Naruto also had a lot of time to think, mainly about himself and others. He concluded that his happy-go-lucky self was simply a cry for attention, a mask to hide his true self, even his supposed obsessed crush on Sakura was fake and he knew it. He decided then that he would cut the act and start taking his shinobi career seriously starting with a change of clothes. Of course, knowing the villagers' bias against him, knew that no one would sell to him and used a henge for most of his shopping. Morning of Team Placements Naruto stood in front of a long mirror and looked at himself. Even though I like orange, this is probably a big improvement, said Naruto chuckling. Naruto was wearing long black shinobi sandals and black anbu pants that had a kunai holster on his left thigh. Over his torso he wore a chainmail muscle shirt and a black jacket that had kanji for maelstrom on the back. Finally, around his waist he wore a white sash in which he had tucked his zanpakuto on his left side, and tied on his right bicep was his kanoa ninja headband. After eating breakfast Naruto headed for the academy. As he entered the classroom, he saw that most of the graduates were already there chatting amongst themselves. As he was making his way up, he was called out. Hey dead last, this place is for graduates only. Naruto turned around to see a feral looking boy that had a scruffy grey jacket, had two red fang marks on his face and a little white dog on his head. This was Kiba Inazuka. The whole class stopped talking and all eyes were on the two. Naruto looked at Kiba with a calm expression on his face, not even the least bit phased by the verbal jab. I did graduate, Naruto responded calmly. Oh really, 
I don't see a ninja headband, Kiba challenged mockingly, he was going to enjoy humiliating the dead last before kicking him out himself. Naruto's face didn't change, he simply turned around fully and showed his right bicep, on which his Kanoa ninja headband was tied. After seeing the headband Kiba was shocked along with the class. I've shown you proof that I graduated, so please keep your dog breath away from for the rest of the morning until your Junin sensei picks you up, Naruto said calmly and coldly as he turned back around and started for his seat again. Kiba, recovering from his shock, was angry at Naruto's insult and charged him. What did you call me? You dead last loser, Kiba yelled in anger as he closes the distance between them. Before Kiba could take another step however, he suddenly felt a very sharp and cold feeling on his neck. He looked down slightly and his eyes widened as he saw a shiny, silver blade on his neck. Go back to your seat, mutt, Naruto said while pushing the sword slightly on his throat, just to emphasize what will happen if he doesn't comply. Kiba, after deciding to let it go for not, just growled and left for his seat and Naruto sheathed his katana. Naruto Baka, stop trying to be cool like Sasuke-kun, yelled a pink-haired girl as she marched up to Naruto and was about to punch him in the face. But she abruptly stopped in her tracks however when Naruto gave her a cold and deadly look that sent a shiver down her spine. Sakura, shut up and sit back in your seat, Naruto said nonchalantly and turned towards his seat. Watching all this, was Uchiha Sasuke and his eyes was on Naruto, specifically his katana. It looked so shard and deadly and decided that he would make Naruto give it to him. Naruto sat down in his seat and was about to close his eyes to silently meditate, until he was interrupted again by someone walking up to him. Hey, Dobe, give me that sword, demanded Sasuke as he marched up to the blonde. Naruto looked up at the raven-haired boy with an impassive look. And why exactly should I do that, Uchiha? Naruto asked, seemingly not even taking him seriously. Because that sword looks too good to be in the hands of a weak, clanless nobody like you. Sasuke responded tauntingly. Naruto turned to face the Uchiha and responded. No, because one, it's mine and two, you even if I did give him to you, you wouldn't be able to wield him, Naruto responded. Sasuke after hearing that, was angered by Naruto's response and tried to reach for the sword to take it, but his hand was stopped by a sharp cut of wind that made a cut on his hand, causing him to wince in pain. I suggest you don't try that Uchiha, like I said before, only I can wield him, said Naruto while smirking. Sasuke was about to retort, when the door opened Aruka walked in. Everyone settle down, I'll be announcing the teams, said Aruka. Sasuke scowled at Naruto while holding his hand in pain. You're gonna regret this, that sword is gonna be mine, he said then turned around and left. Aruka started naming the teams. Teams 1 to 6 are unimportant. Team 7 is Naruto Uzumaki, started Aruka, getting Naruto's attention. Sasuke Uchiha, and Sakura Haruno. Your Junin sensei is Kakashi Hitaki, said Aruka. Naruto groaned in annoyance. He was with an annoying banshee and a self-centered emo. At this point he was hoping his sensei wasn't too bad. After announcing the teams, Aruka left, and the Junin senseis came to pick up the teams one by one. Eventually leaving Team 7 on their own. About two hours passed. Where the hell is this guy? Yelled Sakura in frustration. They had been waiting for their Junin sensei for two hours and he still hadn't shown up. Sasuke was just brooding in the corner, taking heated glances at Naruto occasionally and Naruto was working on a seal. Fuenjutsu was another thing he started to pick up during the month and to his surprise, he took to it like fish to water. After 30 minutes, a man with white, gravity-defying hair walked in while reading an orange book. Team 7, the man asked while keeping his eyes in the book. You're late, screamed Sakura, causing the three males to wince in pain. Kakashi ignores Sakura's outburst and continued. My first impression of you guys is, you're boring and annoying. Meet me on the roof, Kakashi disappeared in a puff of smoke afterwards. As Sasuke and Sakura stood up to make their way to the roof, they glanced at Naruto just in time to see him disappear with Shunpo, which shocked Sakura and greatly annoyed Sasuke. On the roof. Okay, let's start with introductions, name your likes, dislikes, hobbies and dreams for the future, explained Kakashi. Can you give us an example, so we know how to do it? Asked Sakura. How did she get the kunoiki of the year again? Was the thought of Naruto. Okay then, my name is Kakashi Hitaki, my likes and dislikes are none of your business. I have a lot of hobbies. 
and dreams for the future, haven't thought about it, finished Kakashi. The three genin sweat dropped over their sensei only providing his name in the introduction. Okay, you can go first pink hair, said Kakashi, getting a glare from Sakura from the nickname. My name is Sakura Haruno, my likes are. She stops and glances at Sasuke. My hobbies are. She took a second glance at Sasuke and giggled. My dreams for the future. She glanced at Sasuke once more and squealed, making the three males sweat drop. What about your dislikes? Asked Kakashi. Eno Pig and Naruto Barker. She yelled with a scowl. Screw you flat chest, said Naruto in response earning a growl from Sakura. Okay your turn emo kid, said Kakashi, getting a glare from Sasuke. My name is Sasuke Uchiha, I don't have many likes, but a lot of dislikes, my hobbies are training. And my dream, no, my ambition is to kill a certain man and restore my clan, he finished. Naruto just rolled his eyes while Sakura had love hearts in her eyes. Okay, your turn blonde, said Kakashi. Right, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, I like ramen and working on fuinjutsu, I dislike traitors, pedophiles and people who judge others based on appearances or something out of their control. My hobbies are creating seals and training Kazamaru. And my dream is to become the best Shinigami and Shinobi that I can possibly be, he finished. Strange, from what Hokage-sama told me, he had this obsession of becoming Hokage one day, also who is this Kazamaru? And what does he mean by Shinigami? Thought Kakashi. Sasuke and Sakura simply scoffed at Naruto's introduction, like that loser can be a great shinobi, and what's this nonsense about the Shinigami, was the collective thought of the two. Alright, since introductions are done, I'll be explaining your genin test, said Kakashi. But sensei, we're already genin, we passed the exam, said Sakura in confusion. That exam was a simple test to see if you could make genin, this test however, is to see if you stay genin, explained Kakashi. So, what's the test going to be? Asked Naruto. I'll explain that during the test, also you should know that the failure rate is 66%, so prepare yourselves. Meet me at training ground 7 at 10 o'clock, and I suggest you don't eat breakfast, or you'll puke, finished Kakashi and soon after he disappeared in a puff of smoke. Sasuke stood up to leave but was stopped by the voice of Sakura. Sasuke-kun, do you wanna go on a date? Asked Sakura hopefully. No responded Sasuke, before leaving, making the pink hair frown. No, I won't got on a date with you Naruto Baka, shouted Sakura, turning to glare at the blonde who frequently asked her out on dates to no avail. But to her shock, Naruto was gone, leaving her alone on the roof. Well, I'm going to end it here. Please tell me if you enjoyed this first part. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, this is Dr. Bread out. Peace.